Hall of Famer Steve Young joining us, the former ESPN NFL analyst and former Super Bowl MVP. I thought of you the other day. Well, I think of you a lot of days, but I thought, of, I I thought of you watching Puka Nakua. And the reason yeah. I thought of you is because you played with Jerry Rice and Jerry Rice had football speed. It, you know, it didn't translate to a 40-yard dash, but Jerry didn't get caught. Puka Nakua doesn't have, you know, four or five speed or whatever, but he has football speed. Can you tell me, like, what is the difference between a guy who just runs 40 and a 4-4 four four, or a guy who runs 4-6, but still he doesn't get caught? Yeah, and there's a lot of guys that put a helmet on and it messes up their, like, their athleticism. Like they put the shoulder pads, the helmet, they kind of put cleats on, they run around. And it's like, they're not the athlete that they showed up, you know, in shorts. And uh, most of the time, the uniform creates a little bit of havoc um, and slows you down a little bit. And some guys speed up or at least handle the, the weight and the and the restrictions and they actually get fat. Jerry was that way. And I think Puka, you're just, you, you've you hit it, something that I think is really cool because Puka is somebody that you do not want to cover because he he's strong his hand like he get he he's gonna make you miss and he's gonna run by you and you wonder why how and uh, it's called football speed and people always talk about well what is that you know and I always talk about the force you know the Star Wars force like something you can't really explain but it's a it's a talent that when you put the uniform on you actually get faster and Jerry was that way yeah I agree and I I just feel that way with Puka Nakua all right let me start with the games last night. Uh, what do you see when you see Josh Allen now as opposed to, let's say, two years ago, three years ago? Well, I see a guy that I wish had a little bit more help. Um, I see a guy that has to play Superman every week. Uh, and it's amazing that he's able to put the cape on over and over and over again. Uh, it's the nature of the game today, though. Uh, we've talked about it. You and I have talked about it many times. The game changed because the rule changes and defenses can't launch anymore. There's more space. The game's more wide open. And so the game is now for a guy like Josh Allen. He is the prototype. Somebody who has a big arm, can run around, can run for 52-yard touchdown and change the game in the biggest games of the year. So I, I wish that he could be uh, somebody that had a little bit more help so he could just play quarterback and then put the cape on more you know, periodically. Uh, but he's the kind of guy that's going to win Super Bowls. Super Bowls are going to be won by guys like that. But I think he does have help, Steve. I think he has two good tight ends. I he's agree. Got I, I'm a, Dan, I, I'm with you. There's, It's not like he's helpless. I just wish there's a little more running game, a little more ability to just come out of the huddle, run the play, you know, get the get the yards. And maybe that's about, the, maybe that's about Josh a little bit. Maybe it's about him just saying, look, I'm going to – I'm going to be more regular, more of a manager, just get the ball out of my hands, make the gains, you know, let the let the offense run and be efficient, and then I'll make him even more explosive. So I, I, look, I, I, I hear you, and I probably shouldn't have said it as dramatically, but I just I think maybe it's tactics, and I, I would love him to be able to run the football a little bit more. Who had a more disappointing season, the Cowboys or the Eagles? <laughs> Uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it's painful to think of both, uh, to watch the 10 and one Eagles just go completely disappear. And it was weird. Even last night I watched that before the game, I'm like, the Eagles will, they'll respond. And I've said this week after week and it's like, they're going to respond. They'll, they have to respond and to come up last night and just, there's nothing to respond with. And you want to kiss what's wrong. And, uh, and so that's, that's, uh, unnerving if I were an Eagles fan, but the thing that but they're not, they're not the winner. The Cowboys are the winner or the loser, I guess, is that they continue to underperform at the key moments to their talent and they've done it for 20 years. And you, you, you know, it never ends. They never live up to or extend or expand on the talent they have. They always have a talented team, but they never live to it. And last week was just had to be the most painful thing that Jerry Jones has seen in 20 years. Okay, but this is systemic. And the one constant has been Jerry Jones. Dan, come on. I mean, the, 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 there's a couple of fundamental, so Utah systemic, it's fundamental rootedness of what's wrong with the Cowboys. And that is that Jerry Jones runs the team, but he's not the coach. And I always said, if he's going to run the team, you got to be the coach. 
but he doesn't hire somebody who is empowered by Jerry to be independent so that when you walk in the locker room and you want to talk to the players, you want to yell at the players, and you yell at the players and the players go, well, I don't really care what you say because I only listen to Jerry. And that's the problem is that the head coach for 20 years has not been empowered. And he's got to hire somebody who is clearly empowered. I mean, they talk about Bill Belichick right now. It's fun to talk about. I don't know if there's any chance of it. But a guy like that, that would be somebody who now has the power in the locker room and can get the players to play and to be and live and live up to the expectations and to their talent. Now, the other piece of it, though, is because it's America's team and talks about it, that somehow you're already you're a cowboy. You're already famous. And because of that, they don't have they haven't earned it. I, I think what they should do is like you don't get the star. There's two stars on your helmet. You get one star when you win 10 games and you get another star when you win a playoff game. And that's how you earn the chance to be a cowboy, because otherwise you put the helmet on and everyone thinks they're famous and they get punched in the mouth. And like, wait, we're, we're, already, we're great. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're, we're the cowboys. And you see that over and over and over again. So those are the two rooted pieces that need to change or else the cowboys continue. And people can argue with me. Oh, Steve, that's not true. Well, 20 years of it, 20, 30 years of it, you have to start saying there's something systemic about it and you've got to empower a coach and you've got to take the stars off the helmet until they get earned. Yeah, I think it's a great point because there's a sense of entitlement and and you're right. You're, 100%. Yeah, you're a cowboy. So you're actually saying you start the season with no stars on your helmet either hey, side? 100%. Because it says... <laughs> it's just where they, that's who, that, that's the situation. It's not, I'm not blame. There's no blame. It's just the truth. And so that you have to go, they have to go earn that ability to be a cowboy because otherwise it gets given too easily without having their, you know, they're, they're, it, it just, they think that they just show up and everyone goes, oh, no, they're cowboys. Like, you know, the problem is, is that the rest of the league doesn't care anymore. <laughs> doesn't seem to matter. I want you to place Bill Belichick. Where would you put him? Oh, it's a tough one because he's just it, it, he, it, it, he, and you wonder if he needs the support of all you know some co like can he bring a bunch of people with him and then how long is he going to be there? Because um, you want it today's game. Today's game's different. You look at the most innovative minds of the game today, and you're looking at uh, Miami. You're looking at Kansas City. You're looking at San Francisco, L.A. Uh, the Vikings, the, the 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 Packers, like the innovative minds are really the guys that are moving around, taking advantage of the space. And so Bill Belichick is an amazing coach, but in today's game, he's going to have to find that offensive coordinator, which he hasn't had for a number of years, who can be that innovative mind. Because that's who's winning. That That's how you win championships. used to be, I'll make a ferocious defense and I'll carry a team to the Super Bowl. You can't do that anymore. It's an it's an offensive game. It's a wide open, innovative game, and it's also run by that guy. There's maybe eight today, and if Jordan Love is now one of them out of nowhere, or J- C.J. Stroud is amazing. If those guys kind of are emer- obviously emerging, then you've got eight to ten guys in the league that can go win a championship. You got twenty teams that literally are watching Dan. They they have no chance. They're just showing up, playing six, seventeen games, and then waving goodbye. And so there's eight to ten teams that have a shot. And uh, if you know if you're going to place Bill Belichick, you have to place him in one of those teams with one of those guys with an offensive coordinator who's innovative. And so, it really, to me, that's more important than the actual geography. Would you replace him in Dallas? Would you put him in there for Mike McCarthy? Well, for uh, look, you and I would both agree that systemically that would be a positive, right? That nobody would wonder if Jerry Jones or Bill Belichick's con- in control. And I think that's important. Whoever that is needs to be able to walk in the locker room and leave Jerry behind. And I think Jerry should empower that and, and embrace that. But and does Jerry know that he's part of the problem, Steve? That's that's part of the problem because you have to read the room. But then I've been telling – look, he obviously doesn't listen to me because I've been saying it for 20 years. So, it, like <laughs> – yeah, but you don't tell I mean, him this when you see him in person when you're in. Yeah, I, mean, I have I have intimated <laughs> some of this to him when I see him. Like, Jerry, okay, I mean, okay, I hold on. I'm, I'm Jerry Jones, and I say, hey, Steve, how are hey, how you? How you doing? How you doing? Well, Steve? Jerry, you've got to get a coach that's empowered that walks in the locker room and not afraid. You know, and he's like, yeah. That's not intimating. That's telling him. <laughs> I, I've mentioned it, okay? I've mentioned it a number of times. <laughs> Uh, Hall of Famer Steve Young joining us on the program. How did the Niners not make it to the Super Bowl? 
Uh, you saw them get beat um, by the Ravens uh, and and uh, the, a bully defense. The Cleveland Browns did that. Um, and they also saw them get beat by the Bengals with Joe Burrow just throwing it all over the field. Um, and there's those are the two things, you know, you have, and who's got a defense that's got that bully defense in the NFC today? I know they're going to probably see the Lions and the Packers. I don't know that either on the road – it can can do that. Who can throw it around? Can Jordan Love repeat this? Can he be the new Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, Lamar Jackson? You know, can he be that guy? Because if he can, he can throw it all over the field. There is some weakness in the secondary that shows up, and you know they can get beat, uh, and it's been proven that way. I don't think either defense in the NFC can can be the the bullies that, that could slow them down. I, you you got to be honest; it's pretty unlikely that the 49ers get beat. Who do you think's the best quarterback of all time? <laughs> you like you know, you're sitting in a bar stool and you know going to get in a fight over the stupid <laughs> stuff. Look, Tom Brady has seven Super Bowls. Joe had four. I mean, you, you just when he had his seventh Super Bowl, you're like, no one's gonna ever. And the one says there's gonna be another person that wins seven Super Bowls. I, I, I you, you never say never, but I say never. No one will ever win seven Super Bowls. And so to me, it, we tend to just say that if you whoever has the most Super Bowls is the greatest of all time, and that's fine. You can have all kinds of arguments about it, and and scream and yell, but until somebody wins another six or seven Super Bowls. You know, uh, Tom Brady. I mean, it just has to be that way. Okay, but do you truly believe that that should be the bottom line if you're going to find it, it because never, it never is. But it Steve, we is. don't it's, hold other positional players to that. Yeah, it's contextual, of course. But that's Dan. You, oh, now you're going to be. I'm. I'm. I'm upset that that's the the parameters that we're going to make the judgment on. So I want to change the the way that that's done. Well, good luck. You're going to be run over. Like, okay, let's think about. Let's look at. Um, contextually around the players that, uh, you know, had more uh, um, uh, comebacks, fourth quarter comebacks. But then, wait, wait, if you have a lot of fourth quarter comebacks, what are you doing behind? (laughs) Well, who had the most, uh, you know, like it just, uh, you'll run out of space. I think in the end, uh, football's a team game. So quarterback's the ultimate player on the team game. And so the ultimate thing to do is to go to the Super Bowl and the team game and the quarterback who does it the most. I mean, I, I, I think that's probably why it wins, Dan, because it's the one that there's a lot of other ways to cut it. But in the end, you know, championships have a, championships have a way of like calming the water. Will somebody be recognized as a better receiver than Jerry Rice in our lifetime? No, I think he just relentlessly. Um, he just. You, you can't match the numbers. People have tried. Uh, even in today's, what's crazy is the game's changed so much. It's so much more uh, wide open. You're seeing the efficiency records in the 118s, 120s. You're seeing uh, th- yardage, touchdowns. You know, um, if you look at error adjusted, you know, you think that Jerry <laughs> Rice would easily be covered by now, right? Come on. I mean, 20, 30 years later, you're still looking up like pretty pretty dramatically at Jerry Rice. Then you ask yourself, how? because uh, even if, if you're going to be era adjusted and still be dominant and even un-era adjusted still be dominant, you're, you're going to dominate for a long time. When you watch the game now with your kids, like do you, do you ever go, how did I play that game? Like how did I survive? I've done that when I've, you know, on Monday nights when we're on the sideline and, uh, you know, some teams are, particularly kind of bully looking and you watch and you and you I watch the first quarter a lot from the sidelines <laughs> and I'll be with a buddy or something he's like oh, you you freaking played this <laughs> the best. he calls Dude, it this I played this I played this <laughs> it wasn't just patty cake man this is this is a whole this is like he goes you're kidding me <laughs> like you got freaking rocked man you know you're not gonna so yeah I do I, it, time goes on and you think about the game, but I still, I, the problem with me, Dan, is I see the game today and I see the players that are thriving in this game today. The guys, they're my guys, guys that played like I played. And and you see how they treat the quarterback and you see all the open spaces in the, in the flats are never open. The middle of the field is unpatrolled. And you're like, 
please let me play again. Please <laughs> let me play in this time. And I, and I really mean that. Like, I would love so desperately to play today. It would be so much fun. I mean, I never thought football was necessarily fun. I thought it rewarding and challenging and, like, engaging. But I never thought of it as, like, fun. And I, for whatever reason, today's game, to me, is, like, oh, so much fun. I just want to play. Who's the former teammate of yours who should be a Hall of Famer? Uh, well, there's two. There's probably Roger Craig and, and, and Brent Jones. Okay. And, and I think you'd argue for Harris Barton. Like, all, we talk about 20 years of, you know, dominance. Uh, what, 18 playoff appearances in a row or 19 playoff appearances in a row, five, t- five Super Bowls and, what, 12 championship games, 13 championship games. I mean, it was, it was, it was Patriot-like. And so, you, and the guys that led that and did that, you're you're forgetting a couple or three. Um, inevitably, that happens, but that's that's how I would line it up. Do you have anything cool in your office? Is that your actual office where you are? <laughs> look, I look. I my, when I got married, my wife says, "Hey, look, there's only one quarterback on the in the family. That's me." And I'm like, oh, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> you but, see this ring, Steve? The <laughs> other quarterback bought the house. You see my ring? I got my rings here. I got my, so, I, I've lived uh, for no, uh, for a few decades. Uh, Rat recognizing at home. This is not my. This is my wife's office. I have a little corner <laughs> that I'm using, before, uh, and I'm I'm, I'm before the uh, office hours, and so I get to sit here for a while. What happened to you? <laughs> I, I can tell you one thing: offensive line sucks. I can tell you that. Because that's because that's what I'm playing now, and. Uh, <laughs> Great to talk to you. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Steve. You're the best. That's uh, Steve Young, Hall of Famer.